Today in the episode, Counter Meta, Burning All the Nests, Voice of the Wasteland, where we read your messages and choose the craft of the episode. And we start with a bit of prophetic news. Special. It's time for a new witch hunt. During a night so dark that even ravagers were too afraid to show their eye modules, a new group of raiders arrived to the wastes, armed with nests. Ah! Was that scary? Probably not. But the spooky season is almost upon us anyway, which means that you'll have lots of new shiny trophies to claim. The new witch hunt is starting soon, bringing all sorts of unique, spooky decorations. Do you remember last Halloween and its crazy race with skulls and death? Well, time for round two, with quite a few changes, obviously. For instance, this year, you're going to challenge other survivors on a map that is slightly more dangerous. Let's put it this way. What do you say? Pits are too bottomless? Enemies too brutal? You're taken out way too quickly? Well, let us help you out a bit. As you probably remember, you have to score 100 points to win. You get those points if you hold on to special balls with your vehicle. The longer you have them, the higher the score. Simple, right? Well, there's one small problem. The very second you come into possession of those precious balls, you become a target for every other survivor in the match. How to get rid of the pursuers? Basically, you have two options. The first is to outdrive your enemies with some clever maneuvering and thruster action. And the second is to make good use of different bonuses found in the field. Yep, those bonuses. They can be very handy. For example, who'd say no to a target-seeking scorpion? They can also be outright dangerous, though, like the bomb. Someone stole the balloons? That's not the end of the world. It already happened, after all. Get away from the crowd, take a good look at the map, plan your interception, and hit the gas hard. Ram the thief, get the balloons, and try to lose the tail by engaging your thrusters. Got the bomb? Well, it's time to share some explosive happiness with a fellow survivor. And don't forget to push someone into a hole. Demons down there can't feed themselves, you know. Obviously, crazy races around bottomless pits aren't the only thing coming to the wastes this fall. There's a new spooky look for your garage, a new fearsome vehicle called the Phantom, festive decorations for the area around your garage so that you can finally turn it into a true hellscape, and lots of other cursed gifts. See you in hell. And now... A short commercial break. The Scavenger Press Service says, No, the names of turret cannons have nothing to do with nicknames Ben Scarra had at different times in his life. Any similarity is purely coincidental. Survivor spreading the rumor will be put under the official hydraulic press of the Press Service. Update 0.12.00 Amusement Park brought a lot to the table. But one new weapon quickly distinguished itself as the new big thing. Just hearing its name is enough to conjure painful flashbacks. Yep, let's speak about the true nightmare of the wastes, the nest missile. It locks on quickly, travels really fast, has a launcher that can be hidden deep within a car, and most importantly, hits you from above. At first glance, it might seem like this weapon system is simply flawless, it's hardly surprising that there are that many nest builds roaming the wastes these days. Don't despair, though. Every nest of vipers can be destroyed. There is an answer to every threat. Let's start with the most important thing. What weaknesses or problems does this flying monster actually have? The first weakness is rather obvious. It's not dark magic that guides these missiles to their prey. Several conditions should be met so that they could lock on. The target must be within range, it should be visible, and ideally, there shouldn't be any obstacles between it and the target. You don't have to be THE Lloyd to see that anyone can make it much harder for nest users to fire their missiles effectively at basically every step of this procedure. Don't let the enemy have the pleasure of easy lock-ons. Move unpredictably. Maneuver. Use terrain and ruins as cover. Hide behind sturdy teammates. 
In a pinch, anything goes. The enemy will make a mistake, and you will make them pay for it dearly. The second problem of the nest is, counterintuitively, that it hits you from above, in a very predictable fashion. Yes, most survivors aren't used to having any kind of armor on the roof of their vehicle, but times are changing, and a lot of people have been very quick on the uptake. You can adapt to these new conditions as well. For instance, gun mounts are a godsend. Put a couple of those on the top of your car, and you can easily tank a barrage, or two, or even three. Want something more radical? Tinker with defensive structures based around the Rift 2M. The third problem that nests have is somewhat less obvious. As the things are now, people who rely on these missiles tend to get a bit, uh, careless. We guess it's only natural, if you're mostly preying on survivors that aren't ready to counter this new threat by using a weapon system that's relatively straightforward to use. That'd make anyone complacent. Stay vigilant, and you'll see them slipping. That's all fine and dandy, but what if there are some nests in the air already, quickly coming your way? Well, that's a bit trickier. These devils travel really fast, meaning that you probably won't be able to dodge them completely, even in a really agile car. Your best bet, then, is to minimize the damage. If your weapon is capable of rapid fire, try to shoot at least some missiles down, and keep maneuvering like a crazy man. Nests are usually targeting your cabin. Knowing this, you can make them smash into the better protected bits of your vehicle with some clever maneuvering. There is obviously also the Argus defensive system. It's very good at protecting you from missiles and many other projectiles. The only problem is that this module is rather expensive and it's not like anyone here is swimming in scrap. For example, I was actually way better off before Odagon came into the picture. Oh wait, I didn't say anything. That wasn't me. Wasn't me. Let me go. The first message comes from Green Titan. For the love of everything, I need a good metallic green. Any plans of adding something that is accessible? Hi Titan, makes perfect sense that a Green Titan wants a nice green paint. Happy to say that we're not planning to stop adding new paints anytime soon. And we're certainly going to add a lime green metallic paint later down the line. Razor0712 writes, Hello my fellow Raiders of the Waste, I have a question for you. Do you have any plans for a relic drone or a relic energy weapon? Hi, we don't plan to add relic drones to the game, at least not anytime soon. In the current state of the game, that'd be terrifying. Energy weapon? Might happen. Then there's a question by Gibble Gabble. Um, could you add a drone that just drives around and smiles? Eh. Isn't this the most adorable thing we've heard today? But to tell you the truth, there is a smiling drone in Crossout already. Every fuse is actually smiling all the time. They're psychotic like that. A survivor called Xtor asks, could we get some sort of textures slash animations for the health of movement parts? Like we do for our weapons. Would be cool to see a flat tire, for example. That sounds really awesome, to be honest. But uh, there is a but, sorry. With so many movement parts in the game, it's a massive undertaking, even if we're just talking about the visual side. As things stand, we as a team prefer to add new exciting things and mechanics to the game, rather than modify old things and systems. If they work properly, of course. Finally, there's this question by JJ3792. Are we going to have a Halloween update or event this year? No clue, honestly. Too early to say. And now, probably the most important, and the most pleasant part of the garage, where we choose one craft from the exhibition that the team liked the most these two weeks. The cursed 13th episode needs a suitably cursed car, don't you think? We're pretty sure that people who encounter this little fellow in battle curse their own fate. So it all works out. It has nice looks, good armor, powerful weaponry, and a very fitting name, Game Over. A really nice car for an aspiring horseman of the apocalypse. What can we say? Really well done, Master Game Over? Oh, 
Apparently, people started naming their rides after themselves. Oh, so should we expect something like Boris on a Boris, shooting a Boris at another Boris on a Boris? We can get behind that. That's it for today. Tell us what you think in the comments below. And if we survive the witch hunt, not that we're witches or anything, we'll return with some cool new content in a couple of weeks. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing, leave a like, and try not to fall prey to evil spirits if possible. Good luck!